Hello and welcome to the second session for the North Carolina Virtual Family History Fair. Um, we are going to be discussing newspapers during the next hour. If you do have questions, please feel free to put them in the live chat and we will answer them at the end. My name is Kristen Merriman. I'm the Digital Projects Librarian from the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center and I'm going to be discussing North Carolina newspapers that are available on, for free online. Um, and the two locations I'm going to be discussing today are fully accessible, free online newspaper content, and they're on Chronicling America, which is a Library of Congress website, and the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center's newspaper collection, which is where I work. Um, and the best thing about both those is that they are both full text searchable. Um, and so if you are doing searches for family members, you can put in their names and see what pops up. And so I'll be discussing today how you, one can do that. So the first site I want to focus on is Chronicling America. Um, there are newspapers available through the Library of Congress. The newspapers come from across the United States and date all the way back to 1789 up to 1943, um, with the majority of newspapers being uh, pre-1920s, so um, before there's any copyright concerns. Um, 43 states are participating to date, and 93 newspapers are available from North Carolina. Um, UNC Chapel Hill is the Library of Congress partner on this project, and so they're the ones who are managing uh, all the newspapers from North Carolina. Um, and so if you are doing research on family members who aren't just in North Carolina, they may be moved around, they came from other places, or you live here, but you have family in other places, this is a really great site to look at newspaper content from across the nation. Um, so this is what the, web, the main page of the website looks like, and you can see the link right at the top. It's just uh, chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. Um, so this is the main site, and this is where you would come, and you could do a search um, across all the newspapers on the site, so across all states, all dates. Um, this page here is a list, shows a list of if you did a search for just North Carolina newspapers, and so you can see that there's um, 92 newspapers from North Carolina that are currently available um, for access. And it gives information including the title, um, the number of issues available, the earliest issue that's available, and the latest issue that's available, and so you can really see the wide variety of um, places and dates um, and wide variety of number of issues um, that could be available for a particular paper. Um, and then if you click in, so I just click the first, uh, the first paper that's available, so the Asheville Citizen, um, since they're listed in alphabetical order. Um, and so this gives all the information about that paper that the Library of Congress has. So it includes its title, alternate titles that the paper has had over time, um, what cover, geographic coverage it has, uh, who published it, the dates of publication, which may not match the dates of what's available online, because a lot of these papers were pr published over a long period of time, and digitization costs a lot of money, and so maybe uh, just a few years have been digitized, but the full range of publication uh, dates is a lot wider, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, often you might find a paper that only has, say, 10 years digitized, but you might be available on microfilm at a library um, over a much longer period of time. Um, it also has subjects and additional information um, and succeeding title names as well, so that's all really useful information. This is a view uh, of how you can browse it, and it's a calendar view, so that's really helpful. You can see how often it was published. Um, you can even tell, what's nice about this is you can tell, for example, that June 5th in 1885 was on a Friday. Um, and so this is a really handy browse view, and this is what the view is going to look like for any paper on Chronicling America. And lastly, this is uh, one particular paper's full view. So this is all the pages that were available in the July 21st, 1885 uh, edition of the Asheville Citizen. So a four-page newspaper. Um, and so you get an idea of what's all available for that issue. And then if you click on one of those pages, <clears throat> this is the full text view that you'd be able to see. Um, and so you can zoom in and out. 
you can page through here. You can download it as a PDF or a JP2, whatever you prefer. All of these are, since they are fully accessible and free, you can download any page you find on Chronicling America. And as I was saying, the best part about this is that it is full text searchable. And so I did a quick search uh, for tobacco in the search bar. And you can see all those red spots along the screen there. Those are all the places that tobacco appeared when I did a search. Um, and so when you then click on one of those options, one of those pages, it, can, it keeps that highlighting um, on the page. And so you can really zoom in and find um, where, where it is that what the topic that you're interested in is located in the paper itself. Uh, so this can be very handy if you are doing searches for names because you can really zoom in if it was say a marriage announcement on page 12 of a paper it will take you directly to that page where that person is found um, and so that can be really handy and a really quick way to dig through these newspapers and so now just really quickly I want to show you how one would do a search on the Chronicling America so right here is the main page. Just let me see if I can find my mouse. Here we go. And so right here you'll see is our search bar and you can limit it. I'm going to go ahead and limit it to North Carolina. And so here's a full list of all the states available and pa papers available. And I'm just going to do a quick search for a pretty well-known um, Raleigh last name Broughton to see what pulls up. So you just click in the search box and then hit enter. And so you'll see that we've got over 3,000 results with the name Broughton in it. Um, and so this is what your results page would look like. And then you can go ahead and I'm just going to pick this first one. And just to kind of show you, so you can definitely see, you know, Dr. Broughton's farewell uh, address that he did. And right here, I can go ahead and zoom right in, and you can see just how clear and crisp the type is. See how the highlighting is done, and it's really pretty accurate. Um, and so that's a really easy way to do a search um, across. And then right here is where you can download a PDF, your JP2. Um, you can click through the pages once you're in the paper. Um, so it's all really pretty easy to use. So in addition to Chronicling America, um, a much broader range of North Carolina newspapers that's also freely available is through the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center newspaper collection. The newspapers come from across North Carolina um, for partner institutions that we work with at the Heritage Center. Uh, they're mostly small town papers and college and high school student newspapers. We have 22 African-American papers available, and you'll see there a link to um, that particular, we've pulled them all together in one place on our site, um, but they're also available to just search across. Um, and then we have, uh, we've done a mix of digitization from both microfilm and physical papers, um, and selection is in informed by our partner institutions. We have 327 newspapers from North Carolina currently available. So, um, that is a lot more than what's available on Chronicling America. Um, but the only thing that's going to have a full run are student newspapers. A lot of our college newspapers we've done full runs of. So if you are from a particular school and you want to see your student newspaper, you can probably find the full thing at least up to when they went online, um, online through us. This is a look at what our main uh, collection page looks like. You can see on the map uh, we've got a broad, we've covered the state, or we've tried to cover the state so far, but we are constantly adding content. Um, and you are able to search both by the community paper and student newspaper. And up at the top, you can just throw in your keyword search to search across the newspapers. Again, just like Chronicling America, these papers are full text searchable. So if you throw a name into that search newspapers bar, you're going to search across all of them. This again is a page for just a particular paper. Uh, again, I just went with our top one. 
Um, and the information here is not only your browse by year options, and you can search directly within that paper. So if you know, for example, that you had a family member that lived in a particular town and you really want to just dive into what's available about that person in that town, you can just click on that newspaper title and search within the paper. Um, we also have a map that shows where that town's located, um, the locations that are covered by this paper, as well as the titles that have been used over time by the paper. This particular paper has always been the Alamance Gleaner, so we don't have any others, but some have a whole list. Uh, particularly our student newspapers tend to have a wide variety of titles over time. And then we also have the contributor, the partner we worked with to get this paper online. So in this case, it was the Alamance County Public Library. Again, just like Chronicling America, we have a browse view by date. And very similar, because we use the same uh, basically system to deliver the newspapers online, um, this is what the full page view looks like. And so again, you're seeing the same PDF downloads, the ability to zoom in, to page through the paper and issues um, right there. And again, your search results are going to look very similar if you're doing a full text search. So I threw in farming to do a search for, and you can see again how it highlights the word that you're looking for. And when you click on the particular item, it again keeps those highlights um, in place so you can really zoom in on what you're interested in. And so we're going to do a quick live search on the digital collections site. And just a second. Need our mouse to pop up, maybe. Do you see it? Okay. Maybe we won't be doing a search of <laughs> <laughs> digital and see. But again, it's pretty similar look to um, what how Chronicling America works. Um, so I encourage you to visit our site and check that out on your own. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to discuss um, on our blog, which um, the link is to at the top there, we announce every newspaper we add to the site. Um, and so most recently, we just announced that we had a newspaper from Belmont Abbey College added to the site. Um, and so if you go on our blog and then click on the tag newspapers, which is over there on the right, um, you will be able to keep updated on what we're adding um, and making available on the site. We're constantly adding newspapers. It's a huge area of growth for us. So if what you're looking for isn't available uh, when you look today, for example, um, look in a few months and there might be more available. And we're not only adding new titles, but we're also increasingly adding more dates for titles we already have online. And always feel free to reach out with any questions to us at the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center about Chronicling America or the um, North Carolina Digital Heritage Center's newspaper website. Um, we're always happy to chat how to do searches, um, any troubleshooting you might have. So always feel free, feel free to email us. And now I'm going to pass it over to Michelle Underhill. Great. Um, so thank you, Kristen. And the resources that Kristen just talked about, they're freely available online, and they really are some of the first places I always search for content on it. But sometimes not everything is available online for free. And so there's some other resources, too, that I'd like to talk about. So first, a little bit about the Government and Heritage Library. Um, in case you're just tuning in or missed the first session, we are a truly hybrid library. So we have a physical space in Raleigh, North Carolina, that you can come and visit us and look at the resources that we have. But we also have a lot of digital resources that you can access online and virtual services as well. So what I'm going to talk about um, are some subscription databases that are available from libraries. Also talk about a couple of tools that we have developed at the Government and Heritage Library for those times when the content isn't freely available electronically online or through one of the subscription databases, some tools that you can use to find the resources that you might be looking for. 
And those are the News and Observer Index Online and the North Carolina Newspaper Locator. And then I'm going to start to talk about microfilm and interlibrary loan, which will segue nicely into my colleague Chris's talk um, following, which will be more about the microfilm newspapers at the State Archives of North Carolina. So subscription databases are another wonderful resource that you can use. The, lots of libraries across North Carolina have them. We have some at the North Carolina Government and Heritage Library. And a lot of public libraries across the state also have them and academic libraries. So definitely check with libraries that you're a member of and see what is available. If you are located in North Carolina, you have a lot of subscription databases available to you through NC Live, which is a library consortium of public, academic, and community college libraries. But even if you're located in other states, you may have other subscription databases available to you through your library. So that's always a great first place to start. I'm going to primarily talk about a database called newspapers.com, North Carolina collections specifically, which is available to North Carolinians through NC Live. And I'll talk, I'll touch on some other databases as well, but this, this is the one I'm primarily going to focus on, and the North Carolina collection specifically within newspapers.com. Now, this came about through a collaboration between the database, the subscription database, newspapers.com, and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. They have an extensive collection of newspapers on microfilm, and a lot of what the database did was digitize a lot of those newspapers that they had on microfilm. Part of the agreement was to make them available to North Carolinians, which is where, which lent itself well to providing access through libraries, through NC Live. So that's a wonderful reason why we have access to this incredible resource. A couple of things I want to tell you about this database. It is also the full text of articles and it allows full text searching. So you do get to search all of the, the articles. It is historic newspapers. So if you're looking for things that were published in the last 20 years, this is not the database to go to. However, I will touch on some other databases that you can go to for more current content. And kind of like some of the resources that Kristen talked about earlier, you get images of the paper itself. So you get other articles that appeared in the paper, and you also get the advertisements, which can be a lot of fun. It has pretty good coverage across North Carolina. So here's a map, and you can browse by location and see what newspapers are available for a particular location. You can also browse by title and search by title if you're looking for a particular newspaper title. Also, if you note on the um, left-hand sidebar, there you can limit it by date. So if you're looking for what was published in North Carolina newspapers for a certain time, too, you can access that that way as well. But if you're like me, the first way, I always like to just search for my topic, and you can definitely just go from the, the menu at the top, click on search, and type in the term that you, you want to search. So if you're looking for family names, you can, you can search it here. And I thought, why not try to find some information about Blackbeard? Well, of course, that pulled up more than 40,000 articles. Depending on your surname, um, I don't know if your results will be similar, but that is a lot of articles to go through. Luckily, you can select newspapers, so you can narrow it even after you've done a search. And you can even limit it by time period if you're looking for something that was published in a certain um, time, general time. So that's kind of an in a nutshell how you could use newspapers.com that's available, the North Carolina collection that's available through NC Live. There are some other subscription databases available, though, too. Now, these particular ones that on, on this slide are not available through NC Live, but they are available, I know, through the Government and Heritage Library. And they may be available through your local libraries as well. So that, again, is a good reason to start out by checking with your local libraries and seeing what's available. We do, we are now able to 
provide library cards to North Carolina residents, so please do contact us and find out how to get registered with a library card so that you can access these at home if you are a North Carolina resident. There are some other subscription databases that are available through NC Live, so, and they may be available through other libraries as well if you are um, in another state that will have more current content. And some of these, like US News Stream, for instance, has more than just newspapers. You can get transcripts from CNN news programs, for instance, through this as well. So these are also good resources for you to go to if you're looking for articles on um, more current topics in the last 20 years. Sometimes, however, not even a, um, a subscription database will provide electronic access to something. I love when I can just do a search and have something come out, come up. But we do still have a lot of newspapers on microfilm and it's very different. We, we searching, if, you, if you're not sure where, when an article was published, trying to find it in microfilm can be a little bit more difficult. So we do have an extensive, the local, one of the local Raleigh newspapers that's been published is the News and Observer. And we do have a News and Observer index that is online and the, the dates that it covers are 1926 through 1992. Now this is not a comprehensive index of everything that was published in the News, or, News and Observer during that time. It is an index of articles that were deemed to be of statewide importance by the librarians who were indexing it at that time. And this was a project that went on for decades. So the News and Observer issues that were indexed between 26 and the early 70s were done by the State Library of North Carolina. The ones past that, after that, were done by East Carolina University. Because this index was created over the course of several decades as well, it's good to use a variety of terms, um, terms that we don't use today even. So for instance, if you're looking to see what was published about eugenics, um, definitely search the index for eugenics, but also use terms like mental hygiene, um, because those are some of the terms that were used um, during, during the, the period of eugenics. So I did a search on Blackbeard again to see what we get, Edward Teach, and you'll get different entries for each time the, the art articles about him appear. Um, sometimes if they're indexing, librarians actually type this on typewriters, on little index cards, and you'll get in the, the results an image of the card and information about that article. So it'll tell you, give you kind, kind of some shorthand as to when it appeared to, to find the article. From here, you'll have to go to the microfilm or another source to, to get the article. If you have any trouble deciphering it, luckily there's a link at the top to contact, so you can always contact us and, and we can help you with that. Sometimes though, you may not be researching Raleigh. You may be, a, a lot of times we get questions about people who are looking for obituaries. And they may have a place and a date in North Carolina in which someone has passed away, but they don't know what newspapers are available that might have an obituary on them. So we created the North Carolina Newspaper Locator. The North, North Carolina Newspaper Locator is a database that you can search by location and by year. So, for instance, let's just try out um, Cabarrus County and 1877 and see what we have. So we have two newspaper titles that came up during that time. Now I will say that um, this is a clue in, in your search to see if there might be an obituary about someone. As Chris may tell you, that not every newspaper that has been microfilmed, not every issue of every newspaper has survived. So it's, it's part of the fun of research, right? Um, but the, the beauty of this database, and one of the reasons that it was developed is it's not always the case that 
there was a newspaper for all counties. And often surrounding or neighboring counties would cover news, so it might have an obituary in them if there was no newspaper for the county in which your ancestor had lived. So if you notice, there on the screen it says expand your search, Cabarrus County, to neighboring county. So with a click, you can find what papers were in neighboring counties or counties that touch Cabarrus County. So you have Rowan, Mecklenburg, um, other papers there too. Something else to illustrate, this database was created based on the government and heritage libraries, newspaper, microfilm holdings, but of course we're not the only library that has them, so there may be a copy much closer to you. So if you do find a paper that you are looking for that you would like to see and explore more, if you, from this database you can click go at the end and it will take you to the WorldCat record. WorldCat is a catalog that combines many library catalogs from across the, the United States and even beyond that. And you can see the holdings at other libraries. Now, it's ideal, you, you want to make sure that you contact the library to make sure they have not only the title, but the reel of microfilm that you might be looking for or the years that you're looking for. So, but this is a clue in your, your journey to define where this information might be located. So again, some of the ways we have newspapers at the North Carolina Government and Heritage Library are through subscription databases. Um, we also get some print paper um, newspapers. We also have microfilm. Uh, we have microfilm from the State Archives of North Carolina and other vendors. So these can be sent to other libraries. We do lend out our newspapers on microfilm. So if your library doesn't have it, but has a microfilm reader, we can send that. Um, to them, but it is good to check your local library first. Our, the Government and Heritage Library is a part of the NC Cardinal Consortium, so just doing a quick search on microforms, I found lots of hits from libraries from across the consortium, so it's a great resource for you to check that may be really close by. But if you have any questions, about searching for microfilm or need help, of course, check with your local library. We are also a resource for you as well and are happy to talk with you more about it. So, and on that, I will turn it over to Chris who will talk more about the newspaper projects at the State Archives of North Carolina. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, so we're gonna go over some of our holdings, but we'll go over a little bit of the history of the program of gathering newspapers why we have all this wonderful microfilm for you to look at and how that has gone into digital projects at both the State Library and other and UNC and other institutions. So um, we'll get into that a little bit. Um, I guess I should introduce myself. I am Chris Meekins. I'm head of the imaging unit, which is a microfilming unit at the State Archives of North Carolina. I used to work in reference and is still part of the reference uh, staff as well. Um, so. In 1958, our state archivist, H.G. Jones, began developing a plan for filming early newspapers. Um, microfilming is the preservation medium of choice. It's about a 400-year shelf life. It's readable with a magnifier and a light. So it's what we call human readable. We don't actually need a machine, although it works better if you use a machine. Um, so the state archives and state library, Duke University, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, all developed a plan together. Um, working with the Committee of Conservation and Newspaper Resources, we pitched that to the General Assembly to get funding because nothing happens without funding. Um, so in the 1959-61 biennium, the project was funded. The first project, as you can see on the back of this pamphlet, um, was 17 newspapers in the first, uh, first go at, at trying to get these developed. Uh, within a year, that had become over 100 newspapers in about a 17-page pamphlet of listing of information. Today, we are at um, hundreds of titles and close to 100 pages of, of uh, listing of newspapers. So the project continues to grow. Um, as I've said, this was a um, preservation component. You can see on the right, although we wouldn't advise you doing this at home, ironing your newspapers, uh, but that was to get a better image and get them flat. And you can see maybe in the, the this is a panel directly from a traveling exhibit they used to use in the 50s and 60s 
uh, to advertise a program and you might see in their bundles of newspapers and how bad they really looked. So the aim of the project overall was to take something that looked like this and all of our different repositories, those are the newspapers on shelving, and convert that into something that's more easily um, storable and uh, retrievable and something that will not um, you know, be so fragile it falls apart while you're looking at it. So the project does continue in the last four years since I've been head of the imaging unit. We have taken manuscript newspapers and converted them to microfilm. Um, we look for regional newspapers that have importance to the region, something that might not already have coverage in our collection. So here you see the Dunn Dispatch from Harnett County fits that, as does the St. Paul Review from Robinson County. I missed an in, in there, I think. Um, and the Mount Olive Tribune is something we're currently working on from Wayne County. We still have a few more reels to add to that. And sometimes we get pieces of newspaper collections. The Oxford Pu Public Ledger is an example where there were scattered issues and there are issues missing in the um, newspaper reel collection that we have. And somebody found some back copies, so we were able to go in and uh, image those and add them to that collection. And we have a continuing collection of the Carolinian newspaper that we work with the State Library on. They get the manuscript edition and we will image that for them. So here also is a good place to mention that historically we're working with defunct newspapers. So the State Archives is looking for papers that are no longer not currently in print. Um, and that makes us a good place to find that. The Carolinian and a few other newspapers we do get current copies of. Uh, but mostly our papers will be no longer in publication. So something to think about when you're looking at our collections. So you can go to our main web page and um, if you see the tabs up there currently green is for the public and under that pu public newspapers you can see that uh, public tab you can see newspapers as one of our options. I'll say all this knowing that um, within a couple of weeks our website will undergo major renovation. And so we're, you know, when that comes, I think you'll still be able to find in similar places newspapers and those sorts of things. So the skin might be different, but the information will still be there. So if you click on the newspapers tab, you'll see there's a guide to newspapers in North Carolina State Archives, um, and then there's a couple of other hits. And so if you clicked on the guide, you would see that pamphlet that I just showed you earlier. It will list all the papers in the state that we have, the titles and the holdings for them, the years in which we have those holdings. Um, so that's a great resource to, and that's available as a PDF online. So you're clicking that, you'll see that PDF, and then you can look through it to see if your um, town has a newspaper, if your area does. The North Carolina Newspaper Digitization Project um, was something that we worked, and uh, I believe this was with the State Library that we worked with you guys uh, on that. Um, but this is 18th century newspapers, so very early newspapers. Uh, it's yet a, and this is a free site, it is searchable, yet another place you can go to to see um, information. And then I would be remiss not to mention our blog post, um, just as my colleague was mentioning, that whenever they got a new addition to their uh, database, they would add that to their blog post. We do that as well. And so you can see um, here, you'll be pulling up the keyword. You can see there the Mount Olive Tribune. And you can search um, with the tags for newspapers and other things on that blog post. They'll always uh, show what we've added to the collection. So access for us is a little different. Um, not quite the, still the, if you build it, they will come motto, but we do have that. Um, component. So we're very much about having um, the newspapers on microfilm available in extensive collection, but we don't have room to have everything out on the reading room. So if you've gone to the guide and you found uh, a newspaper you wanted to see, and you've come to the reading room and it's not there, we can always pull that reel from the security vault and make a copy of it and have it available for you to, to look at. Um, so, but if you do come to the reading room, you'll want to bring some change. Uh, it takes a quarter to get a copy from the reader printer, and so you will need that. We can make change at the desk. Best to bring change with you if you can do that. Um, the other part of duplication, we come to you. So the, 
the other part of access is we can do that for you. We do still microfilm to microfilm duplication. You can get a diazo or a silver print on microfilm. And our new offering that we have is microfilm to digital. So we can scan that um, for you as a uh, PDF or a TIFF file or a JPEG, however you want it. We usually, our standard is about a 300 DPI JPEG. Um, that usually gets us per image about a 15K image. So we put that on a DVD for you. Uh, a newspaper reel will take, if it's a full newspaper reel, maybe two DVDs for us to get that information to you. But that's not searchable. So it is exactly what you see on the microfilm. You will page through it frame to frame, just like you would the microfilm. However, instead of having to come either to the archives to use the microfilm or take your microfilm somewhere you can read it, you can obviously use your digital copy uh, at home on your laptop while you're drinking your coffee or having your morning tea or whatever you do with your morning ritual. So those are the ways in which we can get um, copies to you. Those are my contact. Um, I am the person to contact if you need to get a copy of microfilm. So check our PDF, see if there's something that you're interested in. Uh, I'll need a title and a year, and then I can tell you what reel of film that is. I'll send you an invoice, and then uh, it takes us about 30 days from receipt of payment to get you a copy. And uh, this is a great time to do that for Christmas gifts. I'll just throw that plug in there. Right, I guess we're moving to questions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if you do have any questions, um, please throw them our way. And if you were watching, please do fill out our survey.